Oh, hey guys, welcome back. So today's video is all about the Monstera Burly Marks Flame. This plant is just so beautiful. I bought this plant a year ago and a year ago she looks like this and I still can't believe that the plant I have now started from this small little cutie with like a few leaves. And so I'm gonna show you how I grew this little baby into this beautiful, beautiful plant. These leaves are so gorgeous and you know, she's gonna mature her more. And yeah, just seeing the progression of the leaves is just fantastic. So yeah, can you believe this guys that this plant came from that little plant? So I'll talk about, you know, my growing conditions and some tips at the end of the video. But first I want to include the journey I had growing this plant. So I'll include clips from when I first got it. She was in an air raid mix and I don't like growing plants in an air raid mix. So I transferred her into Lekka and honestly from there she took off. So the next clip will start at the date I got it, April, 2022. And and we'll work our way to where we are now. Even though I was there and I filmed these clips, when it comes to plant updates, I do watch these videos again. Obviously the methods I used worked because if they didn't, the plant behind me wouldn't be in her beautiful state. And so again, here's a clip from a year ago, April, 2022. And I will join you guys after all the updates. I don't, I, I, I got a plant <laughs> and it is a great, amazing plant. And I am so excited and scared because this is a very, you know, uncommon, commercially uncommon, rare plant. Now she's a baby. She doesn't look like much, but to me, she's everything. Oh my God, I'm freaking out. Okay, are we ready? I'm whispering, oh my gosh, hello. Okay, so this is the mama leaf. So this is the leaf that, you know, existed. And then the baby has three leaves. The leaves are a lot thicker than like a Monstera Deliciosa. So right now she has these three leaves. I expect this leaf to die off. I'm probably gonna try it in Lekka. And like, oh, like I don't know if y'all can see, but look at the lines. Do you see the lines? I will keep you guys updated. I'm so excited to watch this grow super 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 excited so i'll see you guys in the next clip okay guys it's been five days since i got my monstera burl marks flame the mother leaf so this leaf was the mother leaf when i'm assuming it was a single node propagation and you could see that it is yellowing the rest of the plant so this baby over here it feels fine um, it doesn't feel droopy or anything, but I just want to take a look at the roots anyways. And like I said, I was planning to transfer this into Lekka. So we're gonna just take it out of soil, which is kind of scary. Wow. Okay guys, so the roots look great. You could see these healthy roots here. There is one big one that's not there anymore, <laughs> but that's normal guys. Um, and I was right. So it was a single node uh, propagation here. So I guess I will show you the process of me washing off the soil. I just want to show you something interesting. So that root that was kind of rotten here, you could see, so this was initially the, you know, the main root, but above where it rotted, you could see it stemmed off here and it also stemmed off over here. Even if the main root system rots, a lot of the time the plant has the ability to like branch off just to keep the plant alive. So I'm just cutting off that root. There we go. Then we're just continuing washing off the soil. So good news about this um, plant, when you initially propagate a plant, so in this case, a single node cutting, you can see it was just a one leaf cutting here. They grow their own independent root system. And then when the new plant branches off from the node over here, there is a new root that grows for the new plant. This is really good because I'd be more concerned if there was just one you know, bundle of roots. Here, there's actually two. So that increases your chances, obviously, of the plant survival during the transfer. Plants go through shock when you transfer plants from different mediums. And so, so this is good. And I mean, the roots look healthy after washing off the majority of the uh, soil. And so guys, I have my pre-wash, pre-soaked Lekka here, and we're just going to put a layer at the bottom of the pot. 
And then we'll just put our plant just like that and then put more luck on top. And actually guys, just because the roots are, you know, very big for even a small cute plant, uh, I'm gonna switch it into this. I think it's a five and a half or six inch pot. already so here's a baby guys okay so um a lot of people say to just put plain old water just for the first uh, few weeks i like to do a lightly diluted solution so here is a cup of nutrient solution and i'm just checking the water level and i'm adding just tap water Okay, very important. Once this is all potted up like this, put it in a place with a lot of light. For me, because it's it's spring right now, it needs a lot of light, a lot of hours of light. I'm gonna put it maybe like 12 inches away from my grow light. And yeah, that, that really minimizes um, the rot factor with the roots. Here we are, look at this little cutie, oh my gosh. So I will see you in the next update. So she actually lost the mother leaf, um, which is normal. It's normal for like the mother leaf that they used to propagate the plant from would die off, especially cause I mean, this was a new leaf at the time. It's now a lot, it's hardened off now. I do feel the youngest leaf is about to go. It still feels fine. And honestly, if you guys can't check the roots, and this is gonna sound weird, but I, like every other day, I feel the petioles, I feel the leaves. Just so I know, because obviously I haven't had this plant before. So just so I'll know what it usually feels like, even before I transferred it into Lekka, just so you're familiar, because then you'll easily identify if it's not as firm, dehydrated. And right now she feels fine. This leaf is gonna go. I could already feel it. And, oops, I just broke the leaf. What nightmare. Okay. Okay. Let me just take the whole thing off because now it's just going to rot. Okay. And this is why I said this leaf is a goner. I saw at the edges here, which isn't necessarily bad. Obviously, it's the oldest leaf. And actually, this is great. But okay. If y'all can't see Future Kevin Zoom in, that is a brand new aerial root that was hiding under that leaf. So... That's so exciting, guys. You know me, I'm really about building a bigger root system for plants. And so with the addition of another aerial root, it ensures that the plant matures. And also like, it also just makes me feel better. A larger root system kind of gives you the safety just in case the other root system below rots. I don't see any new leaves yet, but that's okay. Um, that root or like the starting of that area root is like amazing to see. I know I broke one leaf, but like here we are. Look how cute. I have my plants really close to a grow light and because I think that the leaves are pretty thick, they didn't get bleached or anything. Again, the grow light is like literally here because I'm always scared. I don't know when the next update will be. I wanna say two weeks, but I don't think there's going to be a change. Um, but if there is, I will definitely record it. A lot has happened <laughs> since um, I think it was a two week update. I think there was one leaf that dropped or I removed it and then um, the plant was left with two leaves and since that time she has pushed out oh my gosh this is the newest leaf so in the previous video this was the leaf yeah this was the leaf that was there before and now she has this new one so slightly bigger than the last one and <laughs> there's another leaf coming how wild guys you know all the good news you could see that there is another root coming out and yeah i'm super excited i know it still doesn't look like you know what you see in pictures but this is a big deal guys it's been two months she's pushed out this leaf and she's pushing out another leaf and again we have to factor in that i transferred this into leka so there was like a little bit of a like shock factor and yeah there hasn't really been any changes um i guess the only change uh because this leaf is higher up and as you can see this leaf and this leaf they've now turned 
upwards like this. Before they were just like this, they've actually turned this way. And I find it interesting because she's right under a grow light. Like, I'm not even kidding. The grow light is right here and the leaves just kind of like turned into it. It was interesting. I measured it with um, that light meter and it was about 3000 foot candles for this one, which is a lot. I know, guys, I know, I know, I know. And then these two leaves, cause they're a bit lower, they're receiving maybe a thousand to 2000 foot candles. I am only doing this, I do this for about the first three months of having um, a plant newly transitioned into LECA. I find in my experience to minimize the casualty rate, you need to blast it with light. And I'm pleasantly surprised that there hasn't been a lot of bleaching, like, that's not bad at all. Like you could see maybe up here, that's like more of the more normal dark green, but like you can't really tell. It's like very like minimal. Like I said, the leaves are very, very thick. I'm thinking they're more, you know, resilient or can take more than like a Monstera Deliciosa. Okay, I'm still changing my nutrient solution every two weeks. <gasps> I'm only seeing this now. I like want to look at the nutrients, the root. Look at this root. <laughs> How wild, guys. <gasps> okay, so I'm actually shocked. <laughs> so now we have a root that's made its way into the reservoir. I get this question a lot about the fear of rot, which is valid. Um, I find that if the root grew into the solution and it's kind of like a water root, then it's okay for a little bit. And knowing, you know, because this plant is closely related to the De uh, Monstera Deliciosa, you know, gathering information based on my personal experiences, my Thai Monstera Thai Constellation and my Monstera Albo, they actually do fine with the roots sitting in water. So because of that, I'm not worried. So we're just gonna leave it as is. So yeah, this is the two month update. I am so excited to see um, how this plant will grow. And yeah, I will join you guys in another month. It's been four months. So for some reason, you know, time just escaped me and I was originally gonna film a three month one, but it's been four months since I got the Burl Marks Flame and I am so impressed. You can see a little bit of her over here, but the last time, okay, let me just show you the plant first. Look at how much she's grown. So to recap, last time she had these three leaves. So one, two, and three. She's pushing out a new leaf. That's what this leaf was. She was getting too tall for where she was living. So she did get burned by the grow light a little bit. Some on this edge over here. And she's pushed out two additional leaves and they're big. This one over here, guys. And then the newest one here. So I know she might not look like, you know, anything special, but she's special because she's so big. And just looking at the like three leaves that existed at a two month mark and then looking at the three new ones, they're a lot bigger. I'm really hoping either the next couple will like give me like the claw. The first fenestration is usually like a single one and it usually looks like a claw and I just love it. So yeah, look at how beautiful guys. She's, she's incredible. I did that method where I put a Ziploc around the aerial roots, but she is vining a little bit up. So you can see that there is a new root right there. I do think I'm gonna put this on a moss pole just because I think this plant would benefit from it. Um, so you could see the root that has gone into the leca here. And yeah, this one's a bit too high. I don't know if I wanna put her in a bigger pot now. Maybe I should, I don't know. The plan current, the plan currently is to take her out of here, but I, I just don't want to break this root. We put her maybe in a bigger pot with Lekka and then attach her to a moss pole because I think, you know, it climbing would benefit the plant, bigger root system, it'll feel more established, latching onto something. So here she is. How exciting, guys. I think maybe I'll update you guys in another month or in another two months. So the last clip that you just saw was filmed two months ago. And in those two months, she pushed out two additional leaves and these two leaves, they have fenestrations. Okay, I'm gonna show you the newest leaf cause <sighs> she's a claw, she's a claw. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> I can't, this is too much. 
I still can't get over it. Um, so this is the newest leaf. Similar to the Monstera Deliciosa, they will slowly push out fenestrations. Look at her, she is a lobster claw. I like can't even believe. So this is the newest leaf and the one before that was like a weird fenestration. It was like a whole, it continues. So it didn't quite break through here. Since that last video two months ago, she pushed out this leaf and then, wow. Look at her guys. I'm so in love with this plant. Oh my gosh. So I'm so excited to watch this plant grow. There's gonna be more fenestrations as the plant matures. So for now, it seems to me that she's growing like a small leaf monstera where their internodes are generally larger than the large form monstera deliciosa. Like the internodes, they're not as tight. And see, there's new root growth. This one's trying to reach into the LECA. The one before that over here, has just kind of gone around here and she's climbing out she's out she's really outgrowing this pot guys and okay interesting so she has branched off and has all those healthy new roots so it seems to me that those new roots are acclimated to sitting in the nutrient reservoir my plan is to put this up a moss pole and i need to do it soon like i really need to do it like maybe today or tomorrow i still think it's crazy i mean looking at these leaves and now looking at the newest one like come on these aerial roots are just just going off. You can see that she's trying to crawl out and she has a new one coming right in the center. Future Kevin zoom in. Look at that juicy, juicy root. So knowing Monsteras and knowing how big and robust the root system is, I'm going to put her in a really big net pot and I'm going to keep and I'm going to keep it in Lekka. So this is the net pot size comparison, six inch, 10 inch I think I'm not sure into a three gallon bucket here and yeah I'm a little scared guys because there's a chance I'm gonna have to cut these roots because look because look at this root it's going through one of these spaces so I'm gonna try my best to preserve it and to do that I need to cut the net pot okay so we'll just see how this goes um let's take this ziploc off if y'all were wondering I put this ziploc because you can see she quickly grew so I just wanted to cover the adventitious roots coming out Oop. And I was just adding some LECA into the ziploc. Obviously she's outgrown it. She's outgrown the pot. Oh my God. So you can see how robust the root system is. Look at all those root branches and they look really, really healthy. So this is good because obviously if I have to break this root, oh my God, the LECA is dropping. If I have to break that root down here, at least there's more roots just all over the pot. So I don't know how I'm gonna do this guys. I'm just cutting through the bottom. How did we do? How did we do? Okay, so I cut a hole. Um, the root was coming out of here. I'm pretty sure that's enough space, but I just wanna make sure there's no sharp edges that will cut the root. Oh, it's coming out easily, guys. Okay, let's be careful. Okay, 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 we're doing it. Oh my God, yay. Oh my gosh, look at these roots. Okay, guys, look. Oh my God, the leck is just dropping. Look at these roots. I don't know what to do about this wick here. You know, there's a chance that a lot of these roots are already in this. I might just keep it, to be honest. So I'm taking, oh my God. Let's admire the roots again, guys. Oh my gosh. I'm going to try to submerge this into the LECA. You should always do this with your plants, specifically Monsteras, any kind of Monstera. Every time they put out a long aerial root, you should channel it into the medium, whether it's LECA, pond, an aeroid mix. I'm pushing that root system to the very end of the pot on this side, just because when you turn it on its side, whoop, future Kevin zoom in, you can see that this root is going to be submerged once I add the LECA, and then the existing root system on this side will be partially submerged as well. This one up here will start to grow, but because there is gonna be a moss pole here, it'll probably just go into the moss pole. And so I have my washed LECA here, and we're just gonna add the LECA on top.
Okay, so the plan is I'm gonna try to make space on my wire shelf. I've said this before, every time I transfer a plant, even though she was in LECA, I know I ripped some roots off. And just so for rehab purposes, I need to give this a lot of light. The days are getting shorter. There's less sunlight coming through my big windows. And so a grow light would be the best for me. Okay, Burl Mark's flame update. Cause I mean, there's a new leaf. She's not open yet, but like she's there. Okay, okay, okay. So I talked about, here she is. So the previous leaf, we have that lobster claw. So here's the new leaf. I'm scared because, you know, on this side of the leaf, there's no fenestrations and like, I. I don't recommend this, but I'm just gonna like look under. Okay, there's a fenestration. I don't know how many, but I saw a hole. Oh my God, this is so exciting. This is so exciting. Oh my gosh. Are you kidding guys? This is incredible. Wow, wow, wow. I can't believe it's so crazy guys. Yes, I'm going to show off this plant any opportunity I have. And, oh, look at those roots. Okay, let me show you the roots. So yes, I still get questions. Oh, what happens when the roots grow out of the reservoir? You can see that it's happening quite a bit. If we're looking at Monsteras, they don't have an issue with the roots going out of the net pot. So yeah, I usually hit the nutrient solution just where my pinky is. Okay, she's incredible. This is the new sleeve. Look at this beauty. And even the leaves before that, this is the one before the first one with a fenestration, so beautiful. So can y'all tell me, because I'm getting a lot of mixed opinions. In my experience, this plant has been relatively fast, um, but I know a lot of people have been having a slower time growing the Burl Marks Flame. I'm gonna make a mess, cause I'm gonna show you the roots. But here they are, guys. So a large, again, similar to an Albo, a Thai, a Deliciosa. So far, they haven't had any issues of potential rot in the roots sitting in the reservoir. Oh, she's starting to get heavy, guys. Ooh. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, Monstera, early marks flame. So this is what I was talking about. The overlapping leaf. Like, isn't that so cute? This leaf is the newest leaf. She is a stunner. Feeling the petiole, like the part where there's going to be a new leaf. It's growing. So it's not there yet, but I, I do feel it. And I'm so excited for whatever the new leaf looks like, because this was a surprise. Okay, so we're back. And you know what I mean? Like, was that exciting? No? Okay. I thought it was really exciting. Looking back, looking at the growth, and just seeing you know how she is now it is just amazing so the last update she had this leaf she now guys i forgot about this look at this new leaf so she's just peeking she's just peeking out right now but i'm so excited um to see like any new leaf really yeah i just i don't know i don't know so now i'm gonna talk about the growing conditions obviously my experiences are my own so you can have success with this plant in other conditions but i'm just basing this on what i know about plants plus kind of looking at the results a year later of this plant and so starting off with the most important thing when it comes to growing plants the lighting so for the first six months i had this plant right under an LED grow light. I use the Sun Blaster LED strip grow lights. I'll put a link in the description below and the grow light would be on for 14 hours a day. For the first two months of growing this plant, I had it right under the grow light, which was probably 1,000 to 3,000 foot candles. And at the third month mark, I did move it away just because it was getting taller. So it was probably getting 800 to 1,500 foot candles. Still receiving bright indirect light for 14 hours, but leaning more into the medium light intensity. After six months, I had had to move her out of that small little pot and I moved her into this big bucket and it was very challenging trying to find a spot to put it just because it was so big and so I just kind of put her off to the side of the shelving unit which has grow lights but also against my south facing window. After she put out 
her first lobster claw leaf. <laughs> I put her against the window and then she pushed out three additional leaves. So this one, this one, and this one. Even though this is a south facing window and even though you can see she's pretty lit up right now, there are two condos. I don't know if you can see them, but there are two condos right here. Through the winter, the sun would hide behind these two buildings. And so it would be more of a dappled light situation. Plus the winter that we had here in Toronto, there's a span of like almost a month of zero sun. Yeah, I'm just saying that because once y'all hear that this is a south facing window, y'all think that I have the best sun, but especially during the winter time, it's not that great. Obviously during the summer months, when the sun is higher up in the sky, there are so many hours of bright and direct or direct sunlight that showers this whole, you know, wall of plants. But in the time that I've had it against the window, it hasn't been super bright. Now that it's spring, there is more light and it's gonna be interesting to see how this plant grows during the summer months. So in conclusion, when it comes to light, I do think that this plant is happiest between medium to bright and direct light, whether that's in the form of a grow light or against a window. Personally, I believe you'll get better results as you increase the light, this plant will thrive. Okay, so my camera's overheating, so I have a fan just blow in. And so I'm sorry if it's too loud, but let's continue. Moving on to the substrate I use. Y'all know that I prefer to grow my plants in LECA. For me, I see faster results, healthier looking foliage, healthier looking stems. And so that's the reason I decided to grow my Burly Marks Flame in LECA and obviously using a nutrient solution as well. So this is the concentration of the nutrient solution I use and it's mainly general hydroponics based. So in order, I used five milliliters per gallon for cow mag, 10 milliliters per gallon for flora micro, flora grow, and flora bloom, 5 milliliters per gallon for diamond nectar, 2 milliliters per gallon for rapid start, and 2 milliliters per gallon for hydroguard. This was the concentration for the first six months of growing this plant. In October, and I do this with all my plants, I changed the concentration of flora micro, flora grow, and flora bloom to just 5 mils per gallon of each. Your plants are still growing during the winter months, but I feel like they utilize less nutrients than in the hotter summer months. And especially because I moved her against the window and she wasn't under a grow light for 14 hours. I didn't see the need to give her a ton of nutrients. Was my nutrient solution in the first six months overkill? Probably, but it's basically what I prefer and what I do during the summer months. In the first six months, I was changing this nutrient solution every two weeks. And in the last six months, I've been changing the nutrient solutions every four weeks. Again, this is also because it's a little cooler in this room. Room, there's less light. And so I found that the plants weren't sucking up the nutrient solution as fast as when it was the summer. Again, this is why I love growing plants in LECA. You're basically giving or supplying the plant with the right macronutrients, the right micronutrients, so your plant can grow big and strong. Obviously, I'm not the person to talk about growing plants in an aeroid mix because it's not the method I prefer, but I would just pull knowledge from growing this plant in LECA and just apply that to growing it in an aeroid mix or in pond. Obviously pond is very similar to LECA where you still have those fixed air pockets between the media and if you're growing this plant in an aerid mix just apply what you know about just growing plants in general. These plants need chunky 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 aerid mixes. A lot of bark, a lot of pumice, a lot of perlite, some cocoa husk just to ensure there are air pockets in the substrate. Bottom line your plant's roots need to breathe. They need a lot of oxygen around the roots so don't put it in a dense mix because you will not have success with it. Is that me? <laughs> okay, moving on to temperature. So in the first six months, which was the spring and summertime, the temperature in this room was between 65 degrees Fahrenheit to 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And in the winter time, it was probably about 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Rule of thumb, you shouldn't go below 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But again, this plant is a monstera, so it definitely came from a place where the temperatures were higher than, you know, my living conditions or my plant room conditions. So I think that it would actually thrive. Okay, and the last thing is humidity. In the spring and summer, it was about 40 to 60 percent, and in the winter months, it was probably between 35 percent to 50 percent. I do think this plant can tolerate extremes when it comes to humidity, so you kind of have a big range. Again, all these growing conditions are just based on my personal experience, and I felt like I wanted to share with you guys just because I've had success with this plant. Okay, I do want to talk about a few more things. I don't want to say they're tips. I wrote some things down. I don't know. Okay, I get this question a lot. 
is a Monstera Burly Marks Flame, similar to a Monstera Deliciosa, a Monstera Thai Constellation, a Monstera Albo, Monstera Aurea. Okay, for me, in my opinion, growing all these plants in LECA, they behave similar when it comes to leaf growth, root growth, and just growing conditions in general. So I would say if you have success with any of those and you're worried about the Burly Marks Flame, I think you'll be fine if you've had success with any of those. They are very, very, very similar and the roots in my opinion, they're very similar. So what I do with all my Monsteras, once you see a new aerial root from the newer growth popping out, depending where it is in the plant, either channel that into the substrate or have a moss pole or something. And you can see, I did that here. So right there, there was a root coming. I channeled it into the LECA. The next one, right into the LECA. And then the moment she got taller, I attached a moss pole to it. And this ultimately does two things. You want to build a big, robust, healthy root root system. And by doing that, the plant will feel secure in where she is. And I find at that point, she starts to grow faster. And okay, guys, I'm getting out the towel because I guess I'll show you the roots. Roots have grown into the reservoir and a lot of the root system is sitting in the nutrient solution. Okay, here are the roots. So you can see that there are some ends, not a lot though, that are darker. God, how do I do this? I didn't think this through. Okay. I'm gonna have to change my shirt. Um, just feeling the roots, they're healthy. Um, what obviously you wanna see is having this main root, but having secondary branching over here. I'm dripping everywhere, oh my God. And so, I mean, this could change. Like there might be a moment where the roots do take over the reservoir and there might be an issue. I really think this plant is so similar to any type of Monstera Deliciosa. I do think the nutrient solution I use helps, specifically the Rapid Start and the HydroGuard at preserving those roots if they're sitting in the reservoir. But yeah, they're totally fine. Okay, the next tip, really, especially when you get it and you're not familiar with the plant touch your plant i know that sounds weird but like you gotta feel the stem you gotta feel the leaves you gotta feel like how hydrated they are when you first get it because then you'll have an idea moving forward what the plant needs for example guys looking at this leaf you might think that she's not usually like a thicker feeling leaf compared to like the monster deliciosa but these leaves, they're so thick. Like, I, I can't even explain it. Like, y'all are gonna have to get your hands on one. It is a lot thicker than a Thai constellation leaf, a Monster Deliciosa leaf. It's a lot thicker. So if I didn't know that and this plant was a little bit like dehydrated, maybe the roots have rotted away and the plant is unable to hydrate yourself, I might feel a leaf and think that it feels normal just because I have experience growing and feeling a Monster Deliciosa. I did get a few questions from my followers on Instagram, and so I'll just answer the ones that I haven't already in this video. What are your experiences when it comes to growth, like the roots and foliage? So I think I talked about the roots a little bit. Again, I feel this type of Monstera has bigger roots on average, and you know, just ensuring that you give this plant a chunky substrate so these roots can breathe and have the ability to branch off. And when it comes to foliage, and this ties into another question I got, what's the rate of new leaves coming out once it takes off? Yours is such a fast grower. So in total, in 12 months, um, it's pushed out nine leaves. So not quite a leaf per month. However, did you guys notice that in the first six months, she did push out six leaves? And then in the last six months, so the six months that's so the six months that's just past us, wow, that was so hard to say. She's only pushed out three. I think there's three main factors. Number one, I moved this plant away from a grow light. At the six month mark, I changed my concentration of nutrient solution. So it had less nutrients and it was a little bit cooler in this room. So I think that's the reason why she pushed out less leaves in the past six months. When I had this plant under a grow light, it was like a leaf per month, which was insane to me. And I get DMs about this all the time in comments that their Burly Marks Flame is extremely slow. And people did tell me that in the past before I got it. And I don't know if this is a coincidence, but a lot of people that have told me this have their flame in an aerate mix. I don't know if it's because, you know, I have mine in LECA. I don't know if it's because I blast it with light. I don't know if it's because of the nutrients. Like there's a lot of factors. It could be all three, but in my opinion, obviously in my experience and y'all saw, it is not a slow grower for me. Have you ever experienced root rot with it? I mean, not really. There have been some secondary roots that have died, but no main root systems that had rot. Is it worth it? 
I'm usually a variegated monstera, philodendron, and therium guy. You know, if you want to try something new, like I do think this plant is pretty hardy and I just love seeing the transformation. I don't know if you're into that as well, but I mean, if you're looking for variegation, obviously don't get this one. I just ultimately like the look of this monstera. So if, if you like the look, then definitely get it. Okay, and the last questions are about price. Any insight on if the price will go down on them anytime soon? I love this plant. Do you think it would be less expensive one day? So I feel like this plant has been like under the radar for a little bit. I know I knew about it years ago and I really wanted one, but this plant and maybe in some places in the world, but at least in Canada, this plant would go for a few thousand dollars, even like a year ago. Now I'm seeing smaller specimens going for like mid triple digits. So like so anywhere from like 300 to 900 Canadian dollars. And like knowing that that's quite a drop. I don't know if it's gonna go down even more, probably as more people get their hands on it and propagate, like I'm probably gonna propagate mine, like not anytime soon, like I want it to grow a little bit more. But as more people grow this plant and propagate it, then yeah, I think the price might drop a little bit more, but I have zero insight guys. <laughs> okay guys, I guess that's it. So I turned on my camera. I didn't really have a plan <laughs> or script or anything. So I'm sorry if this was so scattered, but thank you guys so much for watching. The main reason why I wanted to put out this video is because there is not a lot out there. Like there are a few people that have posted videos about it, but specifically I want to show you the progress and the growth of mine starting out as a little baby. And yeah, I want to know, is this plant on your wish list? Because, oh my gosh, it is a stunner. Also, I want to hear, you know, the success y'all have had with this plant if you have it and just your insight about like growing conditions and just like how you grew this plant because obviously my opinion is one-sided like this is my experience like I want to hear from you again I have a patreon so I want to thank everyone in my strawberry shake tier and my Lekka drop tier but a very 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 special thanks to those in my burly marks flame tier my lobster claws Marty McCallum Gerda Defty McInnes Kendra Prum Doug Dickerson Janice Supton Crystal Margo T Rocio Ramos Stormer Crow Roy, Corlin Walters, Gina Alexandra, Carlos Holling, Blaine B, Sam Pennypacker, Daniel Wilcox, Casey Gross Hoyas, Francesco, Shana Nelson, Linda Marks, Remy Pabila, Soda Rocks, Danny Alley, Alicia D, Courtney Evans, and Simone Elizabeth. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye!